talked to, I tell you, an Asian chick came up to me today and solicited me when I went to buy this fucking bong. And I got to tell you something, it blew my mind. Like, all my circuits went. What'd you say? What do you think I said? No, I what'd you say? It was the most subtle fucking thing in the world. It was an Asian girl and a white girl. Okay. Did they look like hookers? Not a million fucking years. White girl was the muscle? White girl was the smoker. Okay. 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 Chinese girl was in there. Short skirt. Nice shoes. Did she pass as a hooker? Not in a million years to me. So after I got in the car, I made a left and I made a right just to see if the cops were following me. I was on Lancashire. And I pulled out of there. And I went to the gym and I made that sharp left. And then when I got to Tahunga, I made the sharp right. And I made sure there was no cops following me. It scared the fuck out of me. After she propositioned you? She propositioned me in the weirdest way. Okay, so after I got in the car is when I really thought about it. I've never liked Lancashire. In fact, who got propositioned five years ago at a club in Lancashire? Lisa. (laughs) Guys, Lancashire... Creepy as fuck at night. It's creepy as fuck at night. And the Ha Ha Cafe is there. But now it's on the other side. And I haven't seen nothing creepy on that side. It's really nice on that side of Lancashire. Lancashire is cut in half by Riverside, maybe, or one of those. Camarillo was one of those, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not fucking map. Google it, cocksuckers. <laughs> but the other side, when we first moved here, Lee lived in Sherman Oaks. So at night, we would do the podcast, and we would meet at night, but the ha and we would stand outside and see the amount of women walking by single. And I would sit there and go, something's not fucking right. Because they're not walking on the club side. Remember where the girl took you and propositioned you in the bar? Right, yeah. Whatever the name of that bar is, Stinkies or Sketchies. If they were walking on that side, I get it that they parked and walked to the club. Right. But they would walk on that side. And they were, A, always dressed okay. B, they didn't look hookery. They were pros. They didn't make eye contact with you, but I would sit there and go, what an uncommon amount of single girls walking on Lancashire every fucking night. Yeah, you wouldn't think there were hookers. Right, especially when the action's that way. Okay, so the train gets off. Okay. But that's still fucking four blocks from the fucking train. Yeah, at least. What woman would walk fucking more than four fucking blocks at 9, 10, 11 o'clock at fucking nightly? So something wasn't right. And then I I saw somebody started telling me more. I asked, you know, Junior and I asked Jack. And they started telling me by that corner, that mattress store, there's a hotel. There's a hotel off Lancashire. You make a left. Right when you pass over that, there's a vitamin store. I used to get weed there. I used to do the theater there. That first right, there's a hotel in there. Okay. And I I, I didn't see him till that day there. I saw a black chick out there like a year later in the daytime. And then I put two and two together. So nothing. You know me, dog. Now, years ago, when I first lived in Sunset, there was one day I went outside and there was cops everywhere with fucking guys running away from cars and shit. And I found out later that if you pull over for a hooker on Sunset, okay, so think about this, that if she propositions you or you proposition her, I really don't know the rules, that they give you a ticket and they take your car. So, dog, when I was on Sunset and if I saw those things, I just looked straight and fucking put the windows up and locked the doors just in case, Lee. I didn't know in those days. In those days, Sunset was really bad, you know. I would always think that they would be the cops. How could they not? I, I, I don't know if you remember. I don't think everyone up there, but I, I used to live on... Van Nuys. On, no, even worse. Sherman Way and Sepulveda. And driving up and down Sepulveda at night, it was like what hookers... What, what they tell you hookers look like in movies. No, but they in cars? No, well, uh, a couple times, like I would see them, like this one time in a gas station, one pulled up and they went and got condoms. Uh, that... Uh, there's a Ralph's over there on Burbank, and a couple of them got dropped off over there, I saw. 
but most of them are just walking up and down. The craziest one was when I was going to work at like 9 in the morning and there was one walk still at 9 in the morning. I would always think one of those would be a cop. I would never just pull over. Especially now with all the internet stuff. Oof. And even, I don't think the internet people would be cops too, so I don't know. I, I don't think I could ever do it. Well, today was the slickest move ever. I couldn't go to jujitsu because I still didn't feel it. So I had a meeting. I left the house about 10. I went to a weed store. I dropped the baby off at school first with my wife. I went home, I sent some emails. Boom, 10 o'clock I went to the weed store. I had to go to CVS. I had to pick up some notebooks for tomorrow. And then I shot over to the coffee shop and I rode for a while. Then I went back to the house, ate lunch. And then I went to my one o'clock meeting. So this is what I'm trying to chronological the day is so people know why my mind is blown. I went to the meeting. I probably talked to the guy for like an hour, 15 minutes. I got in my car. I remembered. I missed a call from Lee because my phone was in my bag. I, I didn't know that at that time. I got in my car and I shot over to get the bong. I was thinking about calling him because I was hungry at that time. I was a little hungry. And when you don't eat for a day, you want to eat something dirty. Like, you, you crave grease. Like, the other night I told my wife I craved donuts at 2 in the morning. Oh. Cre uh, those those powdered donuts that come in the six package that are disgusting. Yeah. I haven't eaten those in Delicious. 20 years. That's how sick I was. Oh, we didn't even finish that conversation. So, I got to Riverside. I went to Lancashire, and boom, I park in front of the bong store. Right. And as I walk in, there's a white girl with an Asian girl. Now, between you and me... The Asian girl's got to be 28, 29. She's, uh, I don't know what descent she is. She's not Filipino or darker or Thai. She's either Japanese or Chinese. And just like like a seven? Like not like super pretty, but like... Pretty face. No, pretty face did not look like a hooker at all to me. And then the white girl was like a seven, two... You know, they were both dressed okay, whatever. And then I went in, the guy goes, hey, give me one minute. Good to see you. What happened? And I go, oh, we left the bong in the bathroom and somebody stole it. So he rang them up and then he walked over to me and they stayed looking at candy, you know, the places. Right. And he goes, which one? I go, give me that one. And he goes, it says 40, no discount. But I go, I go, oh, just keep the 40, bro. You're a good dude and shit. And as I grabbed the bong, she was right there. She goes, nice bong. You want a party? <laughs> and I didn't know what the fuck to say, Lee. You know me. I just froze. She yeah. had to be 28 years old. I didn't know what the fuck she was talking about. And I go, me? No, 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 no. I got to get home. I'm running late. I said something cowardly, something stupid. And then as I opened the door, I let them go out first. And that's when she turned. She goes, I don't know what type of party you were talking about. I'm talking about a real party. You could either have me or you could have both of us. She goes, uh, we could work something out. And I just looked at her and kept walking, Lisa. I, uh, beep, beep. I opened up my car. I got in it. I started the car and I drove away like a little fucking sissy that I am. Did you get like a boner? No. No. I had the opposite of a fucking bone. I had the feeling that the cops were about to jump on me from every direction just for opening up the door for them. And I was going to get shaken down on Lancashire in front of all my friends and people would see me and my wife would ask me what happened. And that's what I was fucking concerned about because, that, you know what I'm saying, that's what you're concerned about when you're a fucking... Fuck, so none, none of it was sexual. You thought it was a, a, a trap. I just didn't understand why a woman would say that at three in the fucking afternoon, Lee, if it was even that. On Lancashire Boulevard. She's an entrepreneur. No, no, I didn't know. Nothing, something didn't smell fucking right, dog. I don't blame you. I, that, I don't think dog, I would. Dog, I would never solicit them anyway, and I would have never. Sometimes they talk to you, and you know, like, you get a feeling. Like, if it's a black chick and she talks to you, sometimes you, oh, fuck yeah, you got to have fun with them. 
You just can't dismiss them and run away. Like on the way out of the MGM Grand at 6 in the morning to catch a plane. Hilarious. They'll come right up. You know me. I always get a coffee and I try to smoke a joint and play a fucking video game for 10 minutes before I get in the fucking car for 20 bucks. And at 6 a.m. they just come right up to you? 5 a.m. They'll come right up to you. And you know what? They'll sit there. And you know what, man? You could talk to them and break their balls. Like, like come on, honey. You still got your room key? Fuck yeah, I still got my room key. <laughs> What do you think? You want to go upstairs and have a date? Come on, cancel your flight. This is the best pussy you've ever had. And you just keep fucking playing and giggling. You know the cameras are watching you. So I don't touch them. I don't, I don't even make eye contact. I just go, listen, the cameras are watching you. Sit tight. Show me the fucking good. Let me see that. For speak to me, oh toothless one. Or I'll say something crazy and they'll say, show me the cash. And I go, listen, I got to catch a 635 flight. I got shit to do. And they giggle. And they run away, or they'll ask me if I was in a movie, or if I was in the longest ride, if I want to have a date. And I giggle with them. These chicks were too uptightly. Jesus. There was no foreplay. There was no what type of reefer do you like. <laughs> there was no type of, I've seen you on Periscope. No salesmanship. There was, there was no salesmanship. If there were undercover cops to do something. And it was funny because when I drove around, I saw a cop call on Magnolia. Again, that's my drug dealer, old school paranoia. I do not do cocaine anymore. I wouldn't be paranoid. But it's funny, by the time I got to Magnolia, I saw a cop car patrolling. So you never fucking know, Lee. You never know who the fuck you're talking to. Can you imagine, Lee? What would you do? You go into the, you know, you, you're nice Johnny Sweetness. You asked me, you want me to go buy a bong? And I said, no, I'll go. What would you have done if you would have fucking walked in there at three in the afternoon? And China Wong and her fucking hot assistant, you know, no money was ever said nothing. See, I, I was kind of that stupid. I was like, maybe she just wants to smoke the bomb and then hook up. Like, when she said party, I was like, oh, maybe. Fuck no. When a girl looks like that, she has her own weed. <clears throat> Why would she want to smoke with some fat fucking old degenerate like me? Are you fucking crazy? If she would have came to me and said anything else but the way she did... I would have probably been in jail right now because I would have talked to her. And then you know what I would have done? I would have goofed on her. <coughs> what do you mean goofed on her? I would have asked her for how much, and she would have <coughs> said 500 I go, 500 Come on. I got like 2250 And then she would have said, 2250 what does what that in court? You know, I'm one of those idiots. Right. Because I like to make fucking fun of them and shit. Like, how about I give you... Yeah, you've done that for years. $32 like, and a pair of fucking socks from Wilmington. Yeah, kids. your torturing could have almost got you on, like, to catch a predator or something. Yeah, so I just... I didn't even... If they would have had a sense of humor and said, listen, we'll call girls. We're staying at the hotel down the block. Are you interested in going to a party? I would say, nah, you know. <coughs> how long you girls been doing this? I would have done like a fake background check and shit. Maybe I'll have some Armenians go over there and visit you. I don't know nobody. Who the fuck do I know? I know who you fucking know me. I was thinking, we, we were talking about it in a, in a different way, but I was thinking about it in this way, man. L.A. is a crazy fucking place. Just like in the place where I, where I grew up, I would never see a, there would never be someone propositioning someone. Like, it, like, this place is crazy. On every fucking level. When I was growing up, I never saw a hooker on the streets of North Bergen, New Jersey, Union City. You know, I didn't know where you contacted them at that age. I didn't know, and I didn't want to know. When I got to be about 16, there was a rumor going around on a woman that lived on 81st Street. And whenever the light was on, you knocked on the door, and for 40 bucks, you sucked your dick. Oh, 40 bucks. I would have done that every day. 40 bucks in 1980 was really 80 bucks, Lee. Mm. I never went over there. I was always scared. But that was the only direct. I didn't know what she looked like. I never met her. And then years later, I saw hookers in Manhattan. They used to hang out by that fucking thing by the Lincoln Tunnel. <clears throat> it's funny when, you know, my daughter goes to school in the area. There's a park close oh, by. It's the worst park. Uh, and it's so funny that t sometimes I'm driving at 9.30 in the morning, and I see a fucking hooker, and me and my wife would just look at each other like, what the fuck? 
It's nine thirty in the morning. Didn't were you with me one time when we saw one and with, with Josh Wolf over at the thing and she waved? We I, I saw her years ago. I don't know if you remember. We went to Panera one morning randomly before the podcast even started. I think I don't even remember why we were there. And the the girl with the blonde hair that would always walk through the like surrounding towns. We you saw her and you pointed her out, and that was like years ago. That was like at least three years ago. She was black with a wig. Yeah, yeah with yeah, the yeah, blonde yeah, yeah. wig. And yeah. I showed her to Josh. Well, I used to see her all the fucking time. And one day I was like, oh, my God. I saw her by Gelson's, by the white supermarket. Oh. And she was banging those old, those old Jews in the corner. She was taking their fucking lunch money and sucking their dick. You think I'm kidding you? Who else goes to Gelson's? Mexicans don't go to Gelson's. Black people don't go to Gelson's. Mm. Jews and these fucking Gentiles go to Gelson's. So she would fucking <laughs> suck dick over at Gelson's. There's no cops ever at Gelson's. No, that's a good place to suck dick, I guess. 